Okay, today let's talk about the robot Gog and Magog. There were two robots in the movie Gog. And um, for many years I've been thinking about doing a 3D printed version of it, which of course would have to have some sort of battery operated functions. But there's a couple of things that keep turning me off on the project. I'm going to go over all of that. But first, for any of those that uh, really aren't familiar with Gog, here's a, a page that you can kind of freeze frame, if you will, and you'll see that it, the one is referred to as Gog and the other one is referred to as Magog. And they were uh, mobile robots that were controlled by a computer, Novak. And that Novak stands for something which is too complicated to remember, so let's scroll back up here. It says it in here somewhere. Uh, scientists. Here we go. Uh, nuclear Operative Veritable Automatic Computer, or Novak for short. And basically the plot of the movie is that when they built that Novak, someone hacked in and put a radio control system in it. And since Novak controls the robots, later on they were able to go in there and uh, control the robots. So that's, that's the gist of the, of the movie. Uh, the biggest problem we have with the when you watch this, and I'll put a link. There's a lots of links on YouTube to the to the, not only the movie but to shorts from it. And there's one I like because it just has like the robot scenes from the movie. Uh, it, they were just on rollerboards, uh, casters. These are just a lot of stills that I found online, which I thought would all help. If I decided to do it, you know, pull out little details like the number of rivets and where the holes were and how the claws were shaped and the kind of metal they used in places, the lobby cards. I mean, it uh, kind of looks like they just took some old watering buckets you'd use on a farm back in the 40s and 50s and stood them end on end on a wood box. But... Uh, the color version, there, there's apparently a high def color, a full color set of black and white version out on DVD now, or has been for a few years. So now we can see versus black and white that the thing actually had some color to it. The main body was kind of a, a Robocop light blue and then kind of a silver gray on the rest of it. Um, we're getting to some of the parts that I really don't like about it. I like the base, I like the body, I like the arms. Uh, from the neck up, it's just stupid. <laughs> it gets even worse. There's a, a clear cage up here with some vacuum tubes in it, and there's these whip antenna poles with little bits. I mean, what do you do with that when you decide to 3D print something like this? Now, these tracks, which are only visible on the front part of it, do not move. That's just rubber. They don't even try to make it look like it moves, and it's good because the robot never really rolls forward and backward. It's just kind of scooting around on its casters, sort of like a, a, an early Doctor Who... Dalek type thing going on there. In fact, Doctor Who kind of looks like it might have borrowed a lot of things from it because it's got like the the stock eyeball thing sticking out here, the roller caster action. But here you can kind of see this plastic box, vacuum tubes, large resistors stacked in it. This is just wedged up on on the front of this dome, and here you have the uh, stupid whip antennas, and then there's another antenna thing uh, back behind that. I mean, I really like this design. This part's good. and <laughs> It just gets stupider as it goes up. I can put up with the uh, wash basin body. The arms are kind of cool. I don't really care for the one that looks like, uh, you know what, hanging off the front. Uh, you got your forearms and then the you know what. And it goes on up. Uh, it, just, it just gets worse and worse. But if we 3D printed it, obviously all these little detail parts are going to have to be wires because you can't print something that small and by the time you get up here you go what are you gonna stick these wires on they're gonna get broken and bent and and this really dumb part which thank god doesn't show up all that well in most of the pictures here's a side one which is good if we were gonna proceed with the project because you can see the uh, fake louvers not a whole lot of detailing going on got your wash tubs upside down there See, basically, this nurse is handing it a tray. It's got trays here with things in it. That's what the joke picture there is about. 
and Joe Pidgeot playing tennis, but it's nice to see it from different angles. Wood, just a big wood platform. You actually see on some of these pictures the clips that clip down on the top of these uh, tubs to hold them. The tubs could be made to rotate by the person that's in there scooting around. I guess they would have been on all fours, which is why it never scooted around well, bent over, because you, you, even if you were scratched down on your hands and knees and your head up in here, it'd be kind of based on a probably a five foot three tall girl or something. You'd have to be pretty small. Lobby card. Kind of nice that it uh, shows the color and kind of shows some of that stuff that I don't like. But I mean, it would make a cool uh, 3D printed robot. I just don't know what to do with the little teeny details because they're going to be so small by the time you've made it as a small toy that they're going to possibly get broken. It's a little cleaner picture of the, the nurse one. Actually, you can see the, the two of them in the same shot. This is the back of one of them. This is the front of the other one. And the crazy antenna and loops and all that stuff. This thing sticking off the front, that's where those vacuum tubes and stuff would have been. Um, claws are pretty cool. I was thinking it would probably make a good bump and go uh, toy because it has the mystery action. If you watch the clips in the movie, you'll see it never rolls forward like it's actually on treads or anything. It's just kind of scooting and hovering and spinning around. You get to see the two of them together with their front appendages, which uh, when they're wired up to the tanks are kind of like little flamethrowers. And uh, two different angles on these same upper parts and one that kind of looks red and the other one kind of looks yellow but they mainly do have that uh, Robocop blue color and then uh, the silver gray on the arms and the head yeah, that's a good one for showing more details uh, of the parts that really look stupid I guess you could make it and just leave the dumb parts off <laughs> That's why I've been torn. For over two years, I've been torn on this going, you know, this, this part could be fun. Motorize it, do this, maybe make the arms wiggle a little or something. But then as soon as I got up here, I went, man, this thing is just hideous. That's a nice clean shot there. I really like that shot. It's a good one. It's sharp. It's clear. Let's see if we can pull this down. Oh, yeah. So now you can see the round antenna and hoops there and these. The box again, you got your vacuum tubes and a little, I won't call it a circuit board, you didn't really have circuit boards back in 1954. Things were pretty much point to point wired. And here you can see the uh, wood profiles on the fake vins and the wood standoff. There's this hoop piece which is visible in a lot of the pictures, and now we know what it's for. It's actually holding a uh, connection from the gas canister to the regulator. Or, or control valve, sorry, which then go up to the uh, flamethrower. Not a very clear picture there. Very Well, the picture's probably good, but the one that I found online was like only 16 kilobits in size. And we had a better one of that one earlier, so... Well, there you have it. I'd say uh, put your comments down below on whether you think GOG is worth doing. And if it is worth doing, what do we do about all of this dumb stuff up here? Everything, everything from the neck up is stupid <laughs> and uh, it keeps turning me off where I keep going, yeah, this, this could be fun, this, this could be cool, uh, all the arms could be fun, and then you go, yeah, boy, it's like they ran out of money and ideas at this from here on up, but... Uh, what do you want? It was 1954. They didn't have a whole lot of things to look back on and, and all that kind of stuff.